Hello everyone, and welcome to my Necromunda Underhive Wars review. Um, this was uh, given to me as a free code from Focus Home Interactive, so uh, just transparency there. Uh, Necromunda is one of those franchises that's been around now for so long in Games Workshop portfolio, it's honestly quite surprising that it hasn't been adapted multiple times before now. I mean, what's there not to like about gang warfare in a massive hive city set in the dark, grim future of the Warhammer 40k universe? Okay, so you might not run around the entire Underhive, but eh, the game does give you plenty to do. I'll hold my hands up though, I've never actually had the opportunity to play the tabletop game, which has always looked fun and the new stuff that they've brought out does look quite amazing, but money being something I'm not exactly swimming in, this is a pretty good alternative for me and anyone else in a similar position. Uh, Necromunda, which is developed by Rogue Factor, who made more time, is broken down into two parts. The first is the story mode. Personally, I call it an extended tutorial, though. It introduces the controls, the mechanics, the three different gangs, and the different match types that you can find in the Meteor, um... Well, it's just called Gang Mode, I guess. The story, it does a decent enough job. It explains the world, the reason the gangs are doing what they do, and it allows you to play as all three as you progress through it. I know some of the Necromunda hardcore out there will be upset that the remaining original gangs aren't there currently, but since this is developed by Rogue Factor, who made Mordheim, I can see them being added as paid DLC further down the line. Whatever your views are on that, I can't see it not happening. It's not a perfect setup, but at least you have a good chance of seeing those other gangs being added eventually. Though as a quick side note, completing the story as well here that I've noticed uh, unlocks uh, more gang customization options, but I'll, I'll get more into that later. Now, the story isn't anything really to write home about, to be honest. It does the job of getting you comfortable enough with the mechanics of the game. You can jump immediately into creating your own gang and doing operations easy enough, but it doesn't really have any weight to it. You jump between the three different gangs throughout the campaign, all narrated by a guild character as he manipulates each of them to his own ends, but the gangs themselves, they're all fairly generic. The Escher gang led by Tessa all come from Essex, maybe, possibly. The accents tend to diverge quite wildly. They want the Archaeotech, which is deep below the Hive. There's the Black Ash Orlock Gang, who want the Archaeotech, and are led by some arrogant bloke called... Uh, I forget his name, he's so... boring. And the Goliath Gang are all just massive grok meatheads who want revenge on Tessera and also to shoot everything, and I guess they also want the Archaeotech. None of the characters, though, are really that memorable, fun, or interesting, and the only reason to plow through the mode is, as I mentioned, for those extra customization options. The main draw, really, is creating your own gang for operations. Oh, but it's literally a button called Create New Gang this mode, and it's actually the meat of the game, which this part is actually good. You get to pick from one of the three houses or the gang types, the all-female House Escher who specialise in the production and use of combat stims and poisons, conferring debuffs on their opponents with successful melee strikes, and, you know, buffing themselves with their own homemade cocktail of drugs. House Goliath are all about power and the acquisition of such, usually through sheer brute force. They're about taking damage and dishing it out, and to that respect the Goliaths are a good starter gang for this mode, given their straightforward nature. And finally we have the Orlocks, who prefer to keep their enemies at range, though all the gangs can use the same classes, there's a flavour to each based on the passive buffs that each gang get that's unique to them. The operations mode, you start with a preset gang if you want, or you can make your own from scratch, creating the gang's colour scheme which can be applied to each individual member or across the entire gang for uniformity. Each member can then be personalised with numerous pieces of clothing and minor visual accessories, though the number of hairstyles could have actually been expanded since there are actually quite a lot shown in loading screen art that isn't really available for the gangers. And once you've got your beautiful boys and girls pimped out, you start doing operations. Now operations are laid out on a pretty basic map of the current sector that you have your hideout located in. From here you can choose to embark on any of the listed operations on the map. Sectors also have rival gangs who are all driven by AI and they choose their missions the same time you do, but it isn't until you've made your selection that you find out if you're going to run into those rivals or not. It's actually entirely possible to select a mission and not encounter any foes, thus reaping all the rewards. Other times it can be every gang in the sector, for a maximum of four, including yourself, turning the entire operation into a massive 20-man brawl. Now, five gang members per side doesn't sound like a lot, especially if you are a fan of the tabletop game, but seriously, turns in this take time. Currently, 
At the time when I wrote this review, there is no option to speed up the AI turns, which means you have to watch each and every move in excruciating detail, and trust me, it can be excruciating. For the most part, the AI works well enough. They'll use their buffs, they'll debuff opponents, they'll collect the objective items, they use the environmental traversal things like zip lines and jumping off the down to lower levels, that kind of stuff. But they'll also, a lot of the time, do really weird or just completely dumb stuff, like kneeling down in the open with my entire gang above them, ready to rain down fire, picking up two objective items right next to a brawler armed with a chain axe, and then end their turn right next to said chain axe wielding madman to be utterly destroyed the following turn, or sometimes the same turn. But basically, if the AI is asked to do more than just shoot you, it will really show the flaws of the system. Item extraction is a pretty good example of the AI really being torn between aggression and mission-specific goals. Of course, you, you use this to your advantage, and you slaughter them with ease, made even more convenient when you don't need to collect the items yourself, because when they're all dead, you win by default. Or you could just grab them the same or following turn and leave without issue. It's a real shame, since the game is chock full of skills to learn and tailor your gang members to, making the two uh, characters of the same class play very differently, because one might be more of a pure support, buffing the rest of the gang, and the other could just be a straight-up damage dealer, loaded with passive skills that trigger when doing damage or taking damage, that kind of thing. The room is there to make some really unique character strategies as well as you level up your crew from green level juves to top ranked murderers. Multiplayer is clearly where the gang warfare improves significantly and the option to play casual and ranked are there if you want to play similar to tabletop. I, as an example, if a gang member's downed, they aren't necessarily dead, but they may pick up a permanent injury or two, something I know is a factor in the tabletop game. It adds that little genuine risk to your play, and in the end, if they're weighing you down, you can always call up a reserve to replace them if needs must. It's also in the operations mode that you can play matches like Skirmish against the AI in any configuration you please, from the numerous game types and maps available. The maps themselves are actually quite visually interesting and have lots of verticality to them. The overall visual quality of the game I found was nice in fitting with the universe, and it isn't massively taxing on the system. Sure, it isn't going to RTX everything and scream for all the graphical mod cons, but it isn't to say the game is a munter visually. The soundtrack is fairly good, with lots of the usual 40k style electronic industrial sounds inspired by classic apocalyptic B-movies as well, for good measure. The weapons sound a little weak in some areas. Las guns sound like they wouldn't really punch through armor at all, while the heavy plasma cannon and auto cannon sound goddamn brutal. A mixed bag to be sure, but not the worst. If anything, it would have been actually nice to have some voices for the gang as they fought and used their abilities. Currently, they just grunt and scream as they use them, which I think robs them of the character that these gangs evoke. Gangs in this world are full of wild personalities who have a very punk feel to them, and I don't know, it just feels like they should be giving out at each other during fights and shouting insults at their intended targets. I think though, for me, the worst thing I've experienced with Necromunda is the bugs and the crashes. These have been mainly experienced in the story mode and only really seem to have appeared after the launch day patch, because prior to that it ran pretty well. Numerous times in the campaign now I've been simply dumped back to desktop without reason, or even a crash log. Turns out the game sometimes loads AI characters with illegal gear that they shouldn't have, and then when they try to use that, it can cause a crash. This seems to happen upon loading a save that was created during a match, so restarts of a mission might avoid this, but given the turn times, you might want to make sure you have plenty of spare time at hand to play entire missions of the campaign without interruption. Bugs that have stood out to me have been cameras being glitched into the scenery when having to watch AI turns and having it walk backwards and forwards rapidly to AI characters simply standing dumbfounded for an eternity without it taking their turn ever. There are no turn timers in the story mode or in the operations mode, so you have to reload the match from the menu to fix this. As a side note as well, after speaking to a friend who's been playing the game much more than myself recently, they've encountered numerous crashes, and after suffering several in a row, his profile became unusable, meaning a complete restart of the game. In his words, and I quote, it means finding the save games folder in your app data and renaming it along with unchecking the cloud sync in Steam. Not great, and something Rofactor need to patch ASAP. Overall, 
Necromunda has a great visual aesthetic, it feels like the Necromunda universe translated on screen. The gang customization is cool, the combat works well with some interesting maps to play in. Operations has that nice open-ended gameplay that you can just run forever keeping things interesting. The multiplayer has the potential to keep people playing for a while with their gangs, developing the story of their trials and tribulations of their own creation. However, the game is currently marred by bugs and shonky AI that can make matches laughably easy. The inability to speed up the AI turns makes larger matches incredibly slow and tedious since you can't even rotate the camera to look at the character as they move around, locked to the over the shoulder view by default, meaning you need some considerable time to really get much out of the game. It isn't a bad game, but I don't think now it's worth the full price purchase. A sale, yes, or maybe when they add more gangs to the lineup, but right now it's a very middle of the road title that with some patching and extra additions could become something quite special. Well, that said, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one, and see you next time. Bye-bye.